<laughs> All right, folks, let's get into it here. Uh, we're gonna, today we're going to talk about a homemade HF IQ modulator. These are all made by parts that you can buy on Amazon. And I'm your presenter today, uh, Professor Dr. Moonshine Radio. So we'll go over the parts list of uh, what I bought to assemble it all. It's pretty cheap. It's simple. Uh, you can build this. There's no soldering. You just connect all the cables up and uh, you give it a whirl. And the best part is you're going to learn how modern uh, DSP transmitters work and it's a pretty neat little project all right well the first thing you're going to need folks is a two-channel DDS signal generator I bought this one down here if you only want to go up to 15 megahertz or less then just buy this one if you want to go all the way up to 60 megahertz well then maybe you want to buy this one here instead but uh, anyway it's a pretty nice little uh, two-channel DDS and this is what we'll be using to uh, shift the sound card up to the HF frequencies. Again, it's about a hundred bucks. So this is our two channel DDS generator. Also bought this little device here. It's a simple RF combiner. We're gonna combine the two RF signals here. And then this here will be our final uh, output of the uh, IQ modulator. We're going to need some mixers, folks. Uh, go ahead and buy uh, two of these. If you're going to work down here in this frequency here, you're going to want to buy the ADE-6. Uh, yeah, just bu buy this one, folks, if you're going to make this for uh, HF bands. Don't buy the other ones. So, yeah, go ahead and uh, buy two of them. Ah, it's cheap enough. Buy four. That way, if one's not good, you can swap them in and out and see which two are golden. All right. Next up, we got to buy a cable here. Need to buy a BNC male to SMA male cable. I bought three foot. That's pretty good. Uh, you want to make sure they're both the same length. Uh, that's key. So I need two of these. Um, but again, the key factor is they got to be uh, both the same length. All right. All right, well, we're going to be taking our signal out of the sound card of either your PC there or your smartphone. So that's why we're going to need this plug here, 3.5 millimeter to RCA audio cable. This is very important. This is how we're going to be getting the wave files out of your uh, PC to the uh, HF IQ modulator. All right, going to need this one here, BNC male to RCA female jacks. Uh, just go buy the pack of them there. We'll need two, but just go ahead and buy the pack. It's pretty cheap. All right, next up, we're going to need to buy two of these BNC female to SMA males. Basically, folks, we're just getting all the adapters so that we can take your uh, RCA audio cable and, and convert it into uh, SMA male. If you can find a cable that's uh, 3.5 millimeter to two SMA male, well, then you're all set, but I just did this. It was easier. All right. Next up, we'll need some two SMA cables. Uh, need two of these, but I just bought the pack here. Again, the two cables have to be the same length for phase reasons. So just go ahead and buy these two little short cables and you'll be good to go. All right. So now we got all the parts bought. This is how you're going to all hook it all up here. So this is the... Uh, your smartphone or your PC sound card. You plug the RCA cable into the headphone plug here. Here's the RCA cable. And the gray guy you plug up here and the red one you plug down here. And all those RF adapters I was talking about, well, you're gonna see, you gotta plug them all here and here. Uh, you, you'll see it when you get it. Here's your two channel uh, DDS guy. So channel one, we're feeding up to this mixer and channel two, we're feeding down to this mixer. And now here's the two SMA cables, this cable here and this cable here. And we're going to our uh, RF combiner here. And here is our final RF output. And uh, the RF output here, sorry, that's a typo, folks. Let me change that on the fly here. Oh, geez, you piece of crap. That's really going to be... 880 kilohertz here is going to be our final RF output. 
And again, to change the final RF output frequency here, you just change the frequency of the two channels. Basically make the frequencies the same and you keep channel two 90 degrees and you keep channel one zero degrees. So this is our basic uh, modulator here. Now here are some of the details for the two channel DDS. Channel one, we're gonna set it to 88 Hertz, amplitude uh, 3.3 volts, phase zero. Channel two is gonna be also 880 kilohertz, phase 90 degrees and 3.3 volts. So this is the pretty nice, eh? Now we got the uh, audio volume here out of your uh, PC out or your headphone out. Probably set the volume, I found 90%, gave me the best per settings, but you can set it up to whatever you want just to make it work. All right, once you assemble all this dumb thing, now we gotta see if this thing works, right? So we gotta see if this works, all right. So what you gotta do is, what I found is you play this five kilohertz test file. And this wave file is in a link below this video as well as a whole bunch of other WAV files that you can experiment with. But the idea here, folks, is that the left channel we're playing a cosine signal and the right channel we're playing a sine. And they're both five kilohertz in frequency. And we're feeding those two signals up into our homemade IQ modulator. And it's gonna come out at 880 kilohertz. And then I found a 50 dB pad because it's going to be kind of strong. And then we plugged it right into my RTL SDR radio. And this is the how this was my homemade $20 spectrum analyzer to see if it was working. Okay. Now this is what you're going to have to do. Now when you use the RTL SDR, okay, and you're setting that up for HF frequencies, you have to go into SDR sharp and change that to uh, Q branch or I branch. It doesn't do quadrature. Uh, if you got another SDR unit, then don't worry about it. But that's that's how you get the RTLs to work in the HF bands. Anyway, so here is the spectrum now, this five kilohertz file. And here's the idea. So the two augs are set up for 880 kilohertz, right? But we're playing our sound file that has a five kilohertz tone. And if everything's working great, you should see a stronger signal at 885 kilohertz and a weak signal at 880 and 875. Now for me, I was only able to get 20 dB down, which really isn't too bad considering we did pretty minimal uh, calibrations. Now, one thing you can do to lower this uh, guy's tone here, 875, is you can play with the phase on channel two of that AUG. And for me, I found that this guy went lowest when I had him at 94 degrees. You see, that's why I bought that two channel AUG, is I knew for channel two, I may need to adjust the phase of that sine wave so that this signal is gonna be as low as possible. So that's the reason why I bought that two channel AUG is that I la it gave me a knob to essentially adjust the phase on channel two. All right. Well, congratulations, folks. If you put all that together, you have built your homemade IQ modulator. Now you too can play all the WAV files that I have made on my YouTube channels, and you too can now draw images in the spectrum. It feels good to build something instead of watching TV all day. Now let's keep building, and I, like I always say, fail often and keep learning. Thanks for watching, folks, and have a great day. Now just some details here. Max power this thing, not so great. You're probably going to be somewhere in the ballpark of minus 11 dBm, best case. If you really want to pop that up higher, well, you might need to buy some LNAs to bring it up to whatever, 10 dBm or 20 dBm. But if you're really serious about this and you want to get this greater than 100 watts, well, I would highly advise that you either buy or build some bandpass filters to just ensure that any of the spurs and harmonics of this thing are going to be suppressed.
before you go ahead and amplify that up to 100 watts and then you got the FCC on your ass. That's, you don't want that. For me, I just plumbed it right into my SDR to prove that it was working. But if you really want to transmit this thing with some serious juice, uh, you probably want to get some filters, okay? And maybe talk with some experienced ham radio operators to help you there. Overall, I found it was a very cheap IQ modulator. It was great for experimenters, hams, and students out there learning communications engineering. Well, folks, enough of me blabbing here. The proof is in the pudding, and the next few screenshots and videos will be me showing some demonstrations of this thing and, uh, and how I did it. And thanks for watching, folks. I really hope you learned something. And to the college professors out there, please watch this and stop teaching your students boring style. Be entertaining. Be exciting. After all, these students are paying you quite a bit of money to your university. So could you please do them a favor and not be boring? Well, folks, thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Professor Dr. Moonshine Radio, live from the hills of West Virginia.